this Cindy Cindy. So thank you guys for coming. I'm J.R. Royce. I'm going to introduce Blake Barkwell here in a minute. Blake and I kind of head up in Curtis East Texas, and we don't know what we're doing, but we're just doing what God calls us to do. So I hope everybody got something to eat. I know we ran out, but we tried playing on X amount. The more show up, that's just a blessing. So uh, thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, a couple of announcements. Carthage ISD from top to bottom. I've been stellar to deal with, guys. Anytime we've done, this is our third Men Courage event that we've done here. One in here, one in the football field. We had Dr. Tony Evans back in 20, and then now. And from bottom to top, I can't say nothing about Carthage ISD. They're like, JR, what do you need? JR, what do you need? So, you know, Carthage ISD, I can't thank you enough for your support. Uh, our sponsors, you see a lot of our sponsors going down. They help fund this. Uh, and that's been a big help right there. So if being a sponsor of something you're, you know, you're interested in, come see Blake or I. We have you know, buckets for donations back there if you want to support the ministry. We appreciate all the help. The t-shirt and hat sales, they help. All that goes back into the ministry. Um, Cypress Baptist out of Bozier, they're doing our music tonight. We're really, really thankful for them. Um, obviously, Dr. Luter. Uh, we got to, Blake and I got to spend the day with him, and he's just he's, he's phenomenal. So I'm really excited about that. On the way out, the Gideons have got a bunch of Bibles there. They're all free. If anybody wants a Bible, help yourself when you leave. They uh, there's also some Spanish Bibles. Yourself, if you know anybody wants a Spanish Bible, be sure and grab one of those. Uh, there's free giving Jesus bracelets out there. There's a table out there that has prayer request cards. Anybody that has a prayer request. You don't even have to put your name on there, but we had men that volunteer to help pray over those prayer requests. So anybody has a prayer request, fill out one of those cards, put it in the bucket. Uh, and also, Josh Wilkins is here. He's set up over there on the end of the Men of Courage booth. They, uh, he heads up Men of Courage Outdoors, which is out of Bossier City. And they have a raffle going. It's a $20 raffle for a two-man, two-day, all-expense paid hunt. In Northwest Oklahoma this winter. You have to get with him about the dates. He's going to be going with several of those guys going. So if you're interested in the goose hunt, it's a $20 ticket. All those proceeds go back to Men Courage Outdoors, which is an organization there in Bozeman. So, um, oh, and Bo and Frank Willis. I don't know if y'all are here, but thank you so much for the dinner tonight. Those guys just charge us calls to pay them. So, yeah, Sorry, I'm going to introduce Blake. Mark and Blake's got a couple of announcements. Yeah, no announcements. Just going to start off a little bit different tonight. Uh, thank you everybody for coming. Uh, super, super glad everybody could, could come out. I wanted to do it, uh, start off a little bit different tonight. So JR actually mentioned the Gideons being here, uh, giving out Bibles. Does anyone in here need a Bible? Okay, so everyone has a Bible. So as men, we're gathered here together as men tonight. Uh, there was a vacation Bible school that happened in our community, and they were they went over uh, the the armor of God. What what is this, men? A sword. Okay, this this is the sword. How many of us brought our swords with us tonight, guys? This is super important. If, if, if we're going to be men of God, we're gathering together as men of God. I know Dr. Fred is going to bring the word of God tonight. It's, it's not the same on your phone, man. Have your word with you. Bring your word with you. It's, it's, it's really powerful when you can open this up. This is when the word speaks to you, when we open the word. So that's, that's kind of what I want to do tonight. I know that, uh, that Seth's going to do a great job, those guys that are going to bring the worship. As men, let's prepare our hearts right now for what God has for us. And uh, let's give God what he deserves. He deserves our worship. Uh, so so let, let's prepare right now to do that. But I want to start off with a word. Let's open up a word. So as men, as we gather here together, let's all stand. And let's give reverence to the word. Ephesians chapter 5 is where we're going to be, men. Ephesians chapter 5. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love just as Christ also loved you 
and gave himself, gave himself up for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. But immorality or any impurity or greed must not even be named among you as is proper among saints. And there must be no filthiness or silly talk or coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know with certainty that no immoral or impure person or covetous man who is an idolater has an inheritance in the kingdom of God. And I think all of us at one point in our life can be, be in that category there. Verse 6, let no one deceive you with empty words. Do not be deceptive. Deceive, guys. There's so much going on in our world right now that can deceive us. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be protectors with them, for you were formerly darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth, trying to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Is that what we're doing? Let's try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Do not participate in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead, even expose them. Let's expose some of those things tonight that we're dealing with, guys. Ask God right now to change your heart, for it is disgraceful even to speak of the things which are done by them in secret. But all things become visible when they are exposed by the light, for everything that becomes visible is light. For this reason it says, Awake, sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time, because the days are evil. So then do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do we understand what the will of the Lord is? Let's, let's, let's continue to seek God. Let's open our word every day, and let's, let's use this word. This is the living word. So open it up and allow God to speak to you each and every day. All right, guys. Seth and them are fixing to bring our music. Let's open up with a word of prayer. God, we thank you so much for another day that you bless each and every one of us with. God, we thank you for uh, allowing us to gather together as men and worship you. God, we pray that, uh, as JR said, God, we're just men. And God, we're just trying to serve you. And God, I pray that tonight... As men, God, that you just receive the honor and the glory that you deserve. God, we thank you for allowing us to even know you and who you are. God, for being our creator. God, we pray that you just speak to us tonight. God, we, uh, we ask for forgiveness. God, because we are sinful men, we pray that you just help us as we walk through this life. And, and God, that we can't be this life that your word is talking about. God, that we let our light shine for you. God, we love you so much. God, we thank you for sending Jesus to die because of the things that we have done. God, help us to live out our faith and be bold for you. God, I pray that you speak through Dr. Fred tonight. I know you will. God, use him and continue to use him in his ministry and Seth and these men that are up here bringing the music. God, just speak through them tonight. We love you and we thank you for Jesus. Amen. Come on, guys. Let's raise your hand. It's good to be back with you guys tonight. Let's go ahead and get together some worship with King of Kings and the Lord of Lords.
He's working it out for people. And uh, I'm not there yet. I don't think I'm going to be there until I take my last breath. But I love the journey that I'm walking with the Lord. And so and He's my hope every day. He's my breath. He's my life. He's everything. And, uh, and tonight, that's what we're going to sing about. It's just the goodness and the mercy and the love of Jesus. And Jesus in this place right now, in this room, in this moment, God, with these men, with our souls laid bare, God, with all of our brokenness, with all the things that, that we've got, God, that we're not proud of, God, but we thank you, Jesus, for the cross that you've made a way for us, imperfect and broken creation. And so tonight in this place and in this room, inhabit the praises of your people. Inhabit the praises of these men tonight, God. Holy Spirit, come and have your way, God. We want more of you tonight, God. We don't want just a service, God. We don't want just another message, God. We don't want just another song. But Father, we want the Holy Spirit living, breathing, moving in us in this place, God. So we lay ourselves down, God, before we sing one more song, before we do one more thing, and we say, God, here, here I am. It's all of God. It's all that I am. But God, come and have it. The praises that come out of my mouth to you. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. And then through the darkness, your love and kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Yes, you are Jesus. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages, the God of ages, set down for glory. Feel the 
God, out of these lungs that you have given us, God, that worship would come. God, what you created us for, what you put us here on the earth for was not for living and dying and raising a family and making money and all of those other things that we've got to do. But what you created us for is for worship. And so tonight, God, we want to give you what is yours. This breath you put in our lungs, God, we want to breathe back out praise. So tonight as we worship, we breathe back out that praise. We're breathing in the air that you created. And out of that air comes worthy, honor, glory, power. Lord, that's who you are. That's who you are, Jesus. So tonight, God, we, we pray to fill this room, fill our hearts, God. Let us, let this worship come from broken vessels. But God, let it pour out of our hearts with everything we need.
Technical difficulties right there. Let's give up Seth the praise from the hand. How's everybody doing? Yeah. All right, give me this God, my Father Jesus Christ, who is the Lord and Savior of my life. I want to thank the Lord for my brothers, Brother Gerald, Brother Blake, uh, for giving me this incredible opportunity to be here tonight. Men, the courage, each text, give yourselves a hand, guys. Have a chance to hang out with those guys today. We've been there all day hanging together, and I just thank the Lord for them, for their spirit, for their love for God, and for their love for the men here in East Texas. And this conference is something that, that has been a part of their lives, and they just trust them. Pray that God will just bless the opportunity that God has given to them. To all the pastors, all the ministers, all the churches, all the men who are assembled here tonight, I'm indeed delighted and excited because I have been invited to be here with you all tonight. I have eagerly been anticipating uh, this night ever since uh, JR and I began uh, uh, talking by way of email and invite me. I'm looking forward to this great, great, great opportunity. I'm uh, Fred Lude. I'm from Collins, Louisiana. Been there, born and raised all of my life. A uh, uh, saint to that man all of my life. And I just thank the Lord for this wonderful privilege and all that God has done. I'm uh, born and raised in New Orleans. I pastor a church there uh, in the city of New Orleans. And when I got to Franklin Avenue Baptist Church, the church I pastored uh, 36 years ago, my first church, I never pastored in any other church. I was a street preacher. And I got saved, God miraculously saved me, uh, and uh, I started doing street ministry. And that's why I preach fast, and you'll find that out in a moment. But, uh, uh, but when I got to the church, I called me the pastor. Uh, I we could compliment on one hand, we just didn't have any men. And I, I believe in this ministry, so I began praying, God, send me 
uh, uh, give me a passion for men. And by God's grace, uh, God allowed us to reach men in the city, the community, and uh, because I just believe in this ministry, I believe if you save the man, a man will save his family. Amen? That's why I've always been a fan of Joshua. I love all the biblical characters in the Bible because Jesus Christ, first of all, Paul, right after Jesus Christ and Paul, Joshua is my man. And I, I love Joshua because Joshua had the commitment and the determination to say to his friends, listen guys, y'all about to do some things I'm not comfortable with, y'all about to get involved in some things I'm not comfortable with, Joshua, listen man, y'all do what y'all want to do, go where y'all want to go, but I'm going to draw the line in the sand from this night forward. As for me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord. Amen. And I, I, I thank God for Joshua. Because of the fact that we need more men like Joshua who will make a declaration in front of their partner, their friend, their homeless, their dog, whatever they, you call your partner, that this man, I am in it. I made a commitment to God. I want to live for God all the days of my life. However, guys, the reality is it's not easy living for God. It's not easy making that commitment simply because uh, we have an enemy, we have an adversary, the devil, and Satan is doing all he can to stop us from being the men, the husbands, the fathers, uh, the, the young men that God has, uh, uh, that God desires for us to be. And one of the best, best ways that the enemy does that is our mind. If the enemy can get to our mind, he knows he got us. So I want to challenge you tonight about renewing your mind uh, 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 so that you can be all that God desires you to be as a man, as a, as a, man, as a husband, as a father, as a, young, as a student, so that you can be all that God desires you to be. So with that in mind, turn your Bible tonight to the book of Philippians chapter 2. The book of Philippians chapter 2 is where I'll be preaching from on tonight. Philippians chapter 2. If you have it, please say amen. amen. Matter of fact, y'all can say amen all the time. I'm kind of used to it. Y'all know what I'm talking about, all right? Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8. You'll find these similar words. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider rivalry to be equal with God. But made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. Verse 8, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Our Father and our God, we thank you and we praise you for this wonderful privilege and opportunity that you've given me to be here at Men of Courage in East Texas. Thank you for the school that has a Allow us to be here tonight, God. Thank you for uh, Gerard. Thank you for Blake. Thank you for all of the volunteers, God, that uh, uh, was here tonight, God, that provided the food and the meal, God. Thank you for the fellowship, God. And I just pray your blessings upon them. Thank you for the set and the music. Now, God, do as I ask you I stand and preach. That is, God, let me decrease as you increase. Father, hide me behind the cross. Let them not see Fred. But God, let them see Christ. To their God, that you may be glorified. The saints of God may be edified. Satan may be horrified. And all sinners will come to repentance. And God, when it's all said and done, so very careful, give your name all the praise, all of the glory, and all of the honor. In Jesus' name I pray. And for I say, let everybody say again. Amen. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Guys, with that text in mind, with that scripture in mind, with this bit of courage event on tonight, I want to preach tonight from the subject, the importance of having a renewed mind. The importance of having a renewed mind. Fellas, there's not an hour that goes by. There's not a day that goes by. There's not a week that goes by. There's not a month that goes by in the life of a believer, in the life of a child of God, in the life of a born-again Christian, where your mind is not being tempted, where your mind is not being enticed, where your mind is not being lured by our enemy, by our adversary, by our tormentor, by Satan, by the devil, by Lucifer himself. Whether it's something we're watching on TV, 
but there's something we see at the movies, something we're looking at on the internet, or some other venue. God, the fact of the matter, the enemy is always attacking our mind. That's why Peter admonishes us. That's why Peter warns us. That's why Peter alerts us. In 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, when Peter says, Be sober. Be vigilant. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour, seeking who he may destroy, seeking who he may defeat. Not an hour, guys, go by. Not a day that goes by. Not a week goes by. Not a month that goes by where our enemy, where our adversary, where our tormentor has not put in the mind of a born-again Christian, has not put in the mind of a child of God, and not put in the mind of a believer something we know we should not do, but something we know we should not watch, but Something we know we should not say, but before the 60 minutes of an hour has passed, before 24 hours of a day has passed, before seven days of a week has passed, before four weeks of a month has passed, some way, somehow, we find ourselves, brothers, seduced by the enemy. We find ourselves enticed by the enemy. We find ourselves lured by the enemy. We find ourselves bamboozled by the enemy. The fact that I've changed something. All right, I got a chance. So just not right there. Hold on, hold The enemy will even try the microphones to get us off track. <laughs> he don't care. The enemy don't care to use God to use anything to get your mind off what God has called the moon. So way somehow we'll find ourselves seduced by the enemy, enticed by the enemy, lured by the enemy, bamboozled by the enemy. Therefore, brothers, one of the things that I've discovered. One of the things that I've realized, one of the things that I've seen is that none of us are exempt. The one who's preaching tonight to the ones who are the pews, none of us are exempt. Uh, none of us are exempt from the attacks of the enemy. None of us are exempt from the schemes of the enemy. None of us are exempt from the temptations of the enemy. None of us are exempt from all the things that the enemy will try to do to come against it. Doesn't matter your marital status. You can be single. Saved and satisfied, you are not exempt. Doesn't matter if you're married and marvelous or married and miserable, you are not exempt. Doesn't matter if you're widowed and wonderful or widowed and weary, you are not exempt. Doesn't matter your marital status, doesn't matter your position in the church, you can be a blessed, a blessed bishop, a praying preacher, an engaging elder, a devoted deacon, a terrific trustee, a committed choir member, a magnificent musician, a useful usher, a gracious greeter, a marvelous member. The fact of the matter is, guys, you are not exempt from the attacks of the enemy. Doesn't matter your natural status, doesn't matter your position in the church, doesn't matter your age. You can be a cute child, a tender teenager, in your tempting 20s, your tantalizing 30s, your front and 40s, your fabulous scripture. Your story is 60. Amen, amen, amen. Your serene seventies, your elegant eighties, or your nostalgic nineties, guys. It doesn't matter your age. You are not exempt. Doesn't matter your natural status. Doesn't matter your position in the church. Doesn't matter your age. Doesn't matter your race. Doesn't matter your education. Doesn't matter your vocation. You are not exempt from the attacks of the enemy. Doesn't matter how long you've been in the church. Doesn't matter how long you've been baptized. Doesn't matter how long you've been saved. God's all I'm simply saying the fact of the matter is that the enemy, Satan, will do all that he can to attack the minds of the sons of God, to attack the mind of the men of God, to attack the mind of brothers here at the men of Courage, confidence. And don't just take my word for it. Search the scriptures for yourself. Search the Bible for yourself. And you'll find that Satan has been getting into the minds of believers ever since we were created. Think about it. Satan got to the mind of Adam and Eve and they ate of the forbidden fruit. Satan got to the mind of Abraham and Sarah and they lied about their 
of marital status. Satan got to the mind of Cain uh, and he murdered his own brother Abel. Satan got to the mind of Noah and he got drunk and naked in front of his kids. Uh, Satan got to the mind of Jacob and he deceived his own dad and Isaac. Satan got to the mind of David and he committed adultery with Bathsheba. Yeah, baby had back, baby was fine, she was not gonna, but oh, they say they got to the mind uh, of David. Say they got to the mind of Ammon uh, and he raped his own sister tomorrow. Say they got to the mind of Judas and he betrayed our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Say they got to the mind of Peter and he denied Jesus Christ. Say they got to the mind of the prophet's son and he wasted his inheritance on wild parties and hoochie mamas. Can I say hoochie mamas here? I'm from Northern, and I got hoochie mamas in my church, you know, so. Uh, but I think Carter's Texas, and, uh, and I don't know if y'all use hoochie mamas uh, out here. I know y'all, uh, but, but say that he don't care who he uses, he will use anybody. The biblical list goes on and on and on. And guess what, guys? Guess what, men? The enemy did not stop in the Bible. The enemy did not stop in the scripture. Sitting right here in this auditorium, sitting right here at this men of Carter's conference, a brothers, a husbands, a singles, a seniors, a teenagers, a teachers, a members of churches, high school students, college students, preachers and pastors and professors now, whose mind has been attacked by the enemy, whose mind has been enticed by the enemy, whose mind has been seduced by the enemy, whose mind has been lured by the enemy, whose mind has been bamboozled by the enemy, whose mind has been tempted by the enemy. Therefore, guys, I've come all the way from Northern Louisiana to ask the question of the hour, and the question of the hour is, how can we as men, how can we as husbands, how can we as fathers, how can we as men of God stand in the midst of the attacks of the enemy? How can we as believers win against the seductions that we face every day of our lives? How can we as men be victorious against the temptations of the enemy. But I'm kind of glad you asked. But you asked some good questions here. I like this. I like these. They kind of freeze me up uh, to give you the answer. The answer, guys, is right, right in the text. And the answer is you must, you must, you got to have a renewed mind. You must have a renewed mind. Here's the subject of tonight's sermon the importance of having a renewed mind. And fellas, that's the point that the Apostle Paul is making to the church at Philippi. He's stating to the uh, believers in this church that if we're going to win more than we lose, if we're going to be victorious in our walk with God, if we're going to be able to stand in the day and time that we're living in, if we're going to be faithful to God and faithful to our families and faithful to our church and faithful to our children and faithful to our parents, if we're going to be faithful in the things that God has called us to be, we must have uh, a renewed uh, mind. Therefore, I want every brother tonight to understand, every man in this assembly tonight to understand the importance of having a renewed mind. Therefore, there are three things I want you to see tonight in this text why every one of us should have a renewed mind. If we're going to be men of courage, if we're going to be the men that God has called us to be, there are three things that I want to put on your heart and on your mind that you live with tonight and have a commitment that if I'm going to be the man of God that God has called me to be, these three things must be in my life if my mind is going to be renewed. Number one, a renewed mind will help you to think about your Christ. A renewed mind will help you think about your Christ. Look what Paul says in verses 5 and 6 of Philippians chapter 2. He says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. You see, brothers, before we give into those seductions, men, before we give into seductions, brother, before we give into those attacks of the enemy, before we give into those temptations of the enemy, a renewed mind will help you think about your Christ. A renewed mind will help you think about your Christ. In other words, when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, think about it. He was born of a virgin just for you and just for me. He was lied on and talked about just for you and for me. He was betrayed and beaten 
just for you and just for me. He would deny and demean just for you and just for me. He was spit on and mocked just for you and just for me. He was struck and teased just for you and just for me. He was pushed and shoved just for you and just for me. He was abused and misused just for you and for me. The Bible says he left his home in glory to bring to us redemption story just for you and for you and for you and for me. Oh, brother, for a new mind to help you think about the Christ and all that he's done for you, for you and for me. He brought salvation just for you and for me. He brought redemption just for you and for me. He brought sanctification and justification. He brought regeneration just for you and just for me. He loved us. He saved us. He lived for us. He died for us. He redeemed us with his precious blood uh, just for you uh, and for me. Even though he was full in God, he became full in man and gave his life for you and for you and for you and for me. How can we not want to win for him? How can we not want to stand for him? How can we not want to be victorious for him? How can we not want to be faithful to him? How can we not want to live for him? We need to think about all that he did for us. That's why, brothers, when I think, when I think, when I think about the goodness of Jesus, my mind is renewed, and I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. My soul shouts, praise the Lord. My soul shouts, praise the Lord. My soul shouts, hallelujah, hallelujah, because of everything that Christ has done for you and for you and for me. Then there's another reason. Guys, why it's important to have a renewed mind. Not only does a renewed mind help you think about your Christ, but secondly, a renewed mind helps you think about your choices. A renewed mind helps you think about your choices. Look at verse 7 of Philippians chapter 2. But made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. Brothers, Having a real mind helps you think about your choices. Think about it. Jesus did not allow his heavenly reputation to affect his earthly responsibilities. I need to say that one more time. He did not allow his heavenly reputation. He was the son of God, the second in the Trinity. He did not allow his heavenly reputation to affect his earthly responsibilities. That's why the Bible says he made himself of no reputation. Think about it. Even though he was a king, he chose to become a bond servant. Even though he was fully God, he chose to become fully man. Even though he was deity, he decided to die on the cross for you and for me. Even though he was God the Son, every choice he made in life was to please God the Father. And that's why we must have the mind of Christ. That's why Paul said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Because even though we are born again, even though we're saved, uh, even though we're redeemed, uh, even though we have the freedom to make our own choices and make our own decisions uh, in this life, we must be sure that all of our choices and all of our decisions please our Heavenly Father. Yes, God has given us freedom to make decisions. Yes, God has given us freedom to make choices. But as a man who wants to please God, you need to understand that every choice and decision you make should please your Heavenly Father. Think about it. That's what Jesus did. That's how Jesus lived. Remember when he was tempted by the devil in Matthew chapter 4 and Luke chapter 4? When the Savior came to tip Jesus, Jesus could have said, Hey, devil, don't you know who I am? He could have said, Hey, Lucifer, don't you know who I am? No. Every temptation, Jesus said, It is written, devil, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And brothers, if our choices are supposed to please God, we should know what God says about our choices. In other words, we must know God's word for ourselves. And I, I got to echo what Blake said when he first came up here. That's why we need the word of God in our hand because the enemy will come against us and you got to know what the word of God says in your life because all of our decisions should please God and those decisions are based on what God says in his word. In other words, you must know, brothers, you must know God's word. It's all about choices. But God says in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lead to your own understanding.
understanding. And all your ways acknowledge God, and he shall direct thy path. After the word of God said, Psalm 37 and 3, Trust in the Lord and do good, and so shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. That's why Psalm 37 and 4 said, Delight thyself also in the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. It's all about churches. That's why Psalm 37 and 5 said, Commit thy way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall uh, bring it to pass. Uh, that's why Psalm 118 and 8 said, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence uh, in man. Uh, that's why Deuteronomy 30 and 19 said, I set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Therefore, choose life, for both you and your children, children shall live. Uh, it's all about choices. That's why I see that 26 and 3 said, I keep you in perfect peace, whose mind is set on me, because they trust in the Lord. And my Psalm 27 and 14 said, Wait on the Lord, wait on the Lord, wait on the Lord. Be a good courage. Be a good courage. Be a good courage. For he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. It's all about choices. And my Proverbs 14 and 12 said, There is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. It's all about choices. And my Joshua 24 and 15 said, Choose for yourselves uh, this day whom you will serve. Uh, but as for me and my house, uh, we will serve uh, the Lord. That's what Romans 12, 1 and 2 said. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable servant. And don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And finally, that's why Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20 says, I'm crucified with Christ. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that is in me and the life that I live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Guys, it's all about choices. It's all about choices. It's all about choices. Because every choice you make leads to a consequence. Men, every choice you make leads to a consequence. Now, consequence can be a blessing or can be a burden. J.R. Baker, I heard this story years ago in this barber who was cutting this man's hair. As he was cutting this man's hair, he noticed a little kid about to come into the barber shop. And the barber told the man whose hair was cutting, said, man, you see this kid about to come in? He said, yeah. So that is the dumbest kid in the world. So what do you mean? So the kid came into the barber shop, spoke to the barber, spoke to the man who get his hair cut. The barber told the man, that man, come here, come in. And the barber put two quarters in one hand and a dollar bill in the other hand. He said, okay, young man, which one do you want? And immediately back, the kid took the two quarters and ran off the barber shop. The barber said, see, I told you, that's the dumbest kid I've ever met in my life. He comes to the barber shop two times, sometimes three times a week, and every time he comes here, I put two quarters in one hand, I put a dollar bill in the other hand, and every time that I fail, he takes the two quarters. And they laugh about the kid, and they're like, guy finished getting his hand cut, Walks outside to get this car. He noticed the kid coming from across the street from the ice cream shop, licking on an ice cream cone. He said, "Kid, come here, come here." He said, "Yes, sir." Licking on this ice cream cone. He said, "Yo, man, I, I just saw you in the barber." And the man said, "Yes." So licking on his ice cream cone. He said, "Yo, man, the barber tell me you come into the barber shop two times, sometimes three times a week." And he said, "Yes, sir, that's true." Licking on his ice cream cone. He said, "Yo, man, the barber say he puts two quarters in one hand." He puts a dollar bill in the other hand. He says, every time that I fail, you always take the two quarters. And he said, yes, sir. That she said, young man, son, don't you realize that a dollar bill is more than two quarters? That kid looked at the man, took one more lick off his ice cream corner and said, sir, the day I take the dollar, the game is over. <laughs> that kid wasn't as dumb as he thought he was. He says, all of my choices, I'm going to keep on taking the two quarters. Guys, it's all about choices. Every day of our lives, we make choices. From the moment you get up into the, uh, the way in the morning, to the time you come to go to bed at night, we have choices to make. And every choice, every choice leads to a consequence. Think about it. I wonder if Adam and Eve would have made the same choice if they would have known the consequences. I wonder if Noah would have made the same choice if he would have known the consequences. 
I wonder if David, a man after God's own heart, would have made the same choice if David would have realized the consequences. I wonder if Judas, one of the hand-picked disciples, would have made the same decision to betray our Lord and Savior for 30 pieces of silver if he knew the consequences was going to, he was going to hang himself. I wonder if other believers in the Bible would have made the same choices if they were known the consequences of their decision. We live here in Texas, y'all know a big football uh, state. Uh, We've seen a lot of athletes in your town and my town, in your city and my city. Great athletes have potential to do all that they can, but because of bad choices and bad decisions, never reach their full potential. Celebrities that we marvel at and admire and want to be like have the potential to do anything they want to do, but because of bad choices and bad decisions, uh, make the wrong, uh, make the wrong decision. Right now in New Orleans, our, our best running back that uh, we've had for many years, Alvin Kamara, is suspended for the first three games of the year because of a bad choice he made last year in Las Vegas at the All Star at the uh, at the Pro Bowl game. Brothers, choices will affect us every day of our lives. But not only athletes, not only celebrities, not only those in the media, but what about you, brother? What about us, man? Would you still have made some of the choices that you made if you would have known the consequences? Would you still have gotten involved with that married woman if you would have known the consequences? If you would have, if you would have gotten involved in that ungodly relationship if you would have known the consequences? But you have still committed adultery or fornication if you would have known the consequences? Would you have still have lied or stolen or smoked that crack or slaughtered that coke or uh, claimed church if you would have known the consequences? Uh, would you still have made that choice of living a lie if you would have known the choices? If you knew, if you would have known that your spouse would find out, you would have known that your parents would find out, if you know your kids would have found out. If you know your friends would have found out. If you know the brothers of the church would have found out. Would you still have made those choices and decisions? Brothers, all of us have the same, guys. The importance of a renewed mind is because it will make you think about the consequences of your choices. Because every choice will lead to a consequence that can be a blessing or it could be a burden. Yeah. And then finally, as I come to a close, again, thank you, J.R. Thank you, Blake, for this incredible privilege you've given me to be here on tonight. What, what, what's a, a portion of a renewed mind? A renewed mind helps you think about your Christ and all that he did for you and me. A renewed mind helps you think about your choices. You know, my BC days, I mean, I was telling J.R. and uh, Blake and uh, Mark at lunch, I, in my BC days, my before Christ days, I made a lot of bad choices, a lot of bad decisions that I'm regretting today because I did not realize that I was heading down a road to destruction. But once I got saved, once I got born again, I began thinking about the consequences of those choices. I started thinking about how is this, how will this decision affect the church that I pastor? How would this decision affect the, uh, the people that I've led to Christ in all the years that I've been at that church? How would the decision that I made affect the love of my life, the outcome of my mind, my crime here, my good thing, my wife, Elizabeth, who I've been married to for 42 years? How would my decisions affect our marriage? I think about how would my decision affect my daughter, Kimberly, uh, my firstborn, uh, uh, Dr. Sheila, 40 years old, but still got dad wrapped around her finger. How would my decision affect my daughter? How would my decision affect my son, Chip? Fred Luther the third, we call him Chip, as a chip off the old block who preached uh, uh, last night and this morning for a cottage uh, uh, event in Oklahoma. How, how would my decision affect him? But even farther than that, I got three precious grandbabies. How would the decision I made affect the life of my grandson, Drew, of my granddaughter, Zoe? on my newest granddaughter, Gabby. Every decision I make will be consequences. Guys, that's what we gotta, see the devil never tells us the consequences. He never tells us what the effects of the choices that we make. But guys, that's why we need to have a renewed mind. 
Because a renewed mind will help you to think about your Christ. A renewed mind will help you to think about your choices. And finally, a renewed mind will help you think about your cross. Help you think about your cross. Look at verse 8 as we come to a close. And be found in appearance as a man, he opened himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. A renewed mind will help you think about your cross. Every first Sunday, the church I pastor in New Orleans, Frank Avenue Baptist Church, we partake in the Lord's Supper. Yesterday was first Sunday. It's the most popular service the whole month. People may miss second Sunday. They may stay home on third Sunday. They may do something else on fourth Sunday. But every first Sunday, we almost have a packed house simply because we're partaking in the Lord's Supper. There's something about believers partaking in the Lord's Supper. And we do it at our church. We pass out the communion the packets to everybody. And I get on the pulpit and I take the, the wafer and I lift it up to heaven. And I say, picture Jesus Christ in the upper room with his disciples. There's some bread that's before him. He lifted his bread up there. He passed the disciples. He lifted his bread up to heaven and asked God to bless it. Then he passed each of those disciples and said something like this. This bread represents my body, which shall be broken for you. Let us all eat together. Such a solemn time. Then I take the cup, which represents his blood. Lift it up to heaven. Ask God to bless it. Then I said, Jesus took the wine, passed it to those disciples, and said something like this, this wine represents my blood, which shall be shared for you. Drink all of it and remember to me and we all drink together. And when we take it to communion, it makes us think about what Jesus did for us on the cross. Every time we eat the wafer, it should help you think about the cross. Every time you drink the juice, it should help you think about the cross. Every time you read the covenant, it should help you think about the cross. Every time you take Holy Communion of the Lord's Supper, it should help you think about the cross. His suffering should help you think about the cross. His pain should help you think about the cross. His agony should help you think about the cross. The nails in his hands, the nails in his feet, the spear in his side, the crown of thorns on his head should help you think about the cross. The last seven saying that he said from the cross, the first of me, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. The folk cry when the Eshman went down uh, because the Eshman was taking on the sins of the world. And Jesus cried out, Eli, Eli, let myself out to that. Why, God? Why have thou forsaken me? Why don't you help me think about the cross? That second cry from the cross. Daddy, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And then he died, guys. He died for you and for you and for you. And he died for me. His agonizing death. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. He was hung up for our hang-ups. Oh, he could have called thousands of angels to come and stand by his side. But the Bible says he decided to die for you, for you, for you and for me. But thank God that's not how the story is. Three days later, he rose again. All power in his hand, dead. Where is that stand? Brave! Where is that? And it's all possible because of what Jesus did on the cross. That old rugged cross. God back to him. Hung between two known criminals. That's why our minds should be renewed. So we can walk right. So we can talk right. So we can live right. So we can pray right. So we can preach right. So we can teach right. So we can do what God has called us to do. Men, I beg of you. Men of courage, I plead with you. Men of courage, I beseech each and every one of you. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let your mind from this day forward be renewed because a renewed mind will help you think about your Christ. A renewed mind will help you think about your choices. And a renewed mind will help you think about the cross. The songwriter said it best. 
Must Jesus bear this cross alone and all the world go free? No, because there's a cross for everyone. There's a cross for you and for you and for you and for me. Guys, men of courage, let's have a renewed mind. Father, we thank you and we praise you for the privilege and opportunity that you have given us to be in the Lord's house on this the Lord's day. But I pray that your word will not return void, but accomplish those things that you wanted to accomplish. Master, I pray that men all across this assembly hall, all in this auditorium, would decide tonight is the night that I'm going to have a renewed mind. And we'll be careful to give your name all the praise and glory and the other. In Jesus' name. I'm going to ask everybody to stand all over the building. I'm going to ask all the pastors who are here to spread out all across the front. All the pastors who are assembled here on tonight to spread out all over in the front. Just a moment, set the praise band will lead us into a song of invitation. And at that moment, at that time, we're going to ask those of you who are here tonight who are ready to have a renewed mind. Those of you who are here tonight who are ready to say, God, I need my mind to be renewed. I want to be a Joshua. I want to be a Joshua. I want to be a Joshua. And you know these men. You know these are pastors in your local churches. And so if you're not comfortable going to anybody who's a stranger, go to somebody that you know. And say, Pastor, you lead me in prayer. You don't have to tell them what you're struggling with. You don't have to tell them what the, the issues is. But say, I just want to have it. Pray that I, my mind will be renewed. So that I can be the man that God wants me to be. I can be the father that God wants me to be. I can be the leader in my church that God wants me to be. But I've got to have a renewed mind. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And if there's other personal prayer requests that you have, Tell them, and I have no doubt that each and every one of them will pray with you. So set them free to go to sing. Don't wait on anybody else. Just call from all those somebody that God's already coming. And just pray with these pastors. And ask God for a renewed mind. God bless you. God keep you. I love you. I'll turn it over right now to set the man. Bless you guys.
of these things is to encourage each other as men and know that, that we're all fighting battles. And Dr. Fred is fighting battles. Seth is fighting battles. All these guys up here are fighting battles. I'm fighting battles. Uh, we need each other's uh, other guys. And uh, no one is immune to it, just like Dr. Fred said. So let's... Uh, Let's take this word tonight and, and go and be encouraged and, and encourage other people as uh, as we have been tonight. So thank y'all for coming. I'm going to close this in prayer and we'll, we'll get out of here for tonight. God, thank you so much. God, for just how good you are. God, we want to thank you for your word. God, the living word. God, a word that has sustained for so long. And God, we thank you that... That you, that you still use that today to speak to us, and we thank you for using Dr. Fred and his ministry uh, in such a mighty way, and thank you for using him tonight to speak to us and, and to help us to focus on you and, and God, our mind, and, and just the renewing of our minds to, to focus on you and the things that you've done for us and how good you've been to us. God, I thank you for Seth and these other men that came to play tonight. God, I ask a blessing on their lives and, and for their family and for traveling grace and God I thank you for each man that came here tonight and God I pray that they were encouraged God that you would help each one of us to be bold and to be that light like your word calls us to and, and God that uh, we can just live out your calling on our life God we thank you so much for allowing us to know you and what you've done and God we thank you so much for your son Jesus for dying on the cross for us for